okay so now we'll come back so the next basically the next questions that we have in this text is uh, questions five through eight and for these questions what you want to do is that you want to find the the equation of the tangent line to the curve at the given point so for example let's say that you have for example this this curve over here let's say that you have this curve over here y is equal to x minus 1 over x minus 2 and the point is basically 3 comma 2 right now to find the equation of the of the point tangent to the curve what you can do is that you can uh, you can you can essentially go to desmos.com and you can take a look at the graph of the function because um, it's always a good idea to have a visual understanding of the problem if it's possible if the if the problem is way too abstract of course it's not possible to do that at in essentially in all cases but in simple cases like this you can just simply graph the, the graph the function meaning that you can write x minus 1 over for example x minus 2 and you can see that this is a function that has a vertical asymptote at at um, um, at x is equal to 2 and it has a it has a horizontal asymptote at x is equal to 1 at y is equal to 1 you can see that there's a vertical there is a horizontal asymptote here a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 2 which is at this point over here so this this line essentially tells you about the end behavior of the function which means that when x approaches infinity or negative infinity f of x is approaching positive 1 um, and this line essentially tells you about the the behavior of the function when x approaches 2 either from the right hand side or from the left hand side so then you you know that for example the limit of f of x when x approaches 2 from the right hand side is positive infinity and the limit of f of x when x approaches 2 from the left hand side is negative infinity as you can see here right now so and what what we want to do here is that we want to find basically the equation of the tangent line at the point 3 comma 2 so the point 3 comma 2 is is basically this point over here point 3 comma 2 is this point over here and the tangent line is essentially a line that goes goes through the graph of this function at this point which is tangent to the graph of the function at this point meaning that it has the exact same um, the exact same slope of the, the the exact same slope of the function at this at this point meaning that you need to take a look at the the slope of the function how the function is changing at this point and associate some number to that that becomes essentially the slope of the function at this point which is the instantaneous rate of change of the function at this point and then consider that that number as the slope of that line and then the line is also supposed to go through this point as well right and so now you want to, to write the equation of the line that goes through this point has and has a slope equal to the slope of the function at this point right now if i if i basically if i write the um, the equation of a line that goes through this point if I write if I write the equation of, the, of of a line that goes through this point, that would be for example y minus y one, and y one is the same thing as two for example in this case, is equal to m, which is the slope of the line, times x minus x one, x minus three essentially, because the the x coordinate of this point is equal to three. 
and if I basically if I if I do a slider for M you can see that if I set the if I change the the, the value of M here the value of by changing the value of the slope of the line the line would essentially have to adjust this in such a way that the slope of the line becomes the slope of the function meaning that if I go in this direction in this manner I'm not going in the right direction so I have to go back like this and when I get to this point which is negative 1 you can see that basically that the that the slope of the tangent line and the slope of the of the graph at this point are exactly the same you can see no difference whatsoever between um, between the line and the graph of the function at this point which tells us that that the, that the slope at this point is supposed to be a negative one right now and this is essentially the and this negative one is tells us about the instantaneous rate of change of the function at this point right which is again the also the derivative of the function at this point now how do you calculate this the way that you can calculate it we saw that basically so let's let's consider essentially the same function or let's let's consider some other function let's say that basically you have a function for example something like this you have essentially a, a function let's call this f for example now if this is f then basically the way that you can find the uh, let's say that basically in the case of this function what happens is that basically it's called this point a and this is f so this point would be f of a and if i set that if i set that for example this if i ca call this point x for example and this is x and y if I, call this, if I call this point x then this point over here would be of course f of x right now i could draw a line between these two points like this and i could very easily calculate the slope of this line meaning that i could i know that the slope of this line is but you can basically you can take two points on the on the line and then based on those two points you will be able to calculate the slope of the line this would be one of the points this would be another point on the line the coordinates of these two points would be a comma f of a and the coordinates of this point would be x comma f of x right and so as a result we could say that basically if I draw a line over here and a line over here this length over here would be f of x minus f of a this length over here would be x minus a right and you know that basically when you want to find the, the slope of a straight line the slope of a straight line is the same thing as rise over run so this is your rise and this is your run right so your rise would be f of x minus f of a and your run would be basically x minus a so this simply tells us <coughs> excuse me this simply tells us that the slope of this line is f of x minus f of a over x minus a. This is the slope of this line. Now suppose that, suppose, and this is, by the way, also, this is also the average rate of change uh, for this function between x is equal to a and x is equal to x right 
And the reason that, that that is an average rate of change, let me give you an example so that you can understand it. Now, the reason why this is the average rate of change, why essentially why the slope of this line, why this slope is the average rate of change, rate of change of f between x is equal to a and between x and a essentially between a and x between a and x is that suppose that for example in the exact same situation Suppose that, for example, in the exact same situation, uh, I had, let me draw the graph one more time so that you can see exactly why this is the average rate of change. And I'm doing this essentially one more time because of the fact that um, because I I suppose that there might have been essentially all of these ideas have been presented in the theory part of this of this text meaning in section 2.7 but the material I mean there was there was really no flow in the myth in, in the material for the next parts of this book what I'm going to do is that I'm going to um, uh, essentially make some changes to the material so that there is a logical um, flow in the in the material so that so that essentially you can actually understand these these um, ideas practically rather than um, having to uh, basically to memorize basically uh, um, rather than having to memorize essentially definitions and things like that that doesn't really work in for any practical purpose you have that there has to be some logical flow in the material now the, the the function that we had basically was something like this so let's say that this is for example your function f right and this is x and this is y for example now we're going to to do the exact same thing over here so let's say that this this point over here let's call it as before let's call it a and this point over here let's call it x and so this point becomes and if this is f this becomes f of x and if this point is a then this point becomes f of a right and we know that the slope of the line going through the going through these two points would be basically f of x minus f of a over x minus a this is the slope of this line this is straight line okay now let's say that let's say that basically that now this is a general purpose function this essentially this f of this 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 uh, this axis y could represent any physical quantity and this axis x essentially could represent any physical quantity Let's say that this is the position of a of a car moving along a straight road, right? <clears throat> this is the position of a car moving along a straight road, road, and this is time, right? Now, if you want to know if you want to know what was your what was your average velocity, um, what was your average velocity? the average velocity between between a between times between times essentially a and x how would you calculate that so you would just simply um, you would just simply um, uh, you would just simply calculate where you were 
you would just simply ask yourself where was I where was I at time at time X and at time X you were or at time a for example you were at f of a right and again you, you could say where you could ask the question where was I at time X and at time X you were at f of X <coughs> So that means that basically you have moved from f of a to f of x uh, in this time interval that goes from a to x, right? So that means that the change in the position, the change in the position is the same thing as, well, you have gone from f of a to f of x, which means that the change is f of x minus f of a. And the change in time was you have essentially the time has changed from a to x, which means that the change in time is x minus a, right? So that means that the average velocity, the average velocity, um, so this is the change in position. This over here is change in, in position. And this is the change in time. And you know that basic the average velocity is um, is basically is by definition it's 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 essentially change in position over change in time. Or basically another way of another way of talking is essentially expressing the same thing. You can since basically you are uh, taking a ratio of the change in position and the change in time, you can call this whole thing, this whole fraction, you can call it the rate of change of position. The rate of change of position with respect to time, right? Now, if you take a look at this function, the rate of change of position with respect to time, so we have position essentially along this axis over here, this is position, and we have time along this axis over here, this is time, right? So, which means that essentially this is the, um, this is essentially the average rate of change, this is essentially the average rate of change between time, time essentially time between the time x, x is equal to a and the time x is equal to x, right? So this essentially shows you that that this quotient, that this, that this, that this quotient over here, which is f of x minus f of a over x minus a, is basically is essentially is the rate of change of the of the variable that you have along this axis with respect to the variable that you have along this axis which as we saw earlier is is actually nothing but the but the slope of this line right which means that basically if you take any point over here for example one point over here and one point over here and if you draw for example a line between these two points then for example the slope of this line would be the average rate of change of position with respect to time between between time x is equal to a and x is equal to for example x1 and you can keep changing this point and you will get different slopes for the for the average rate of change right now what you can do in this situation is that you can basically since this is the average rate of change and an average rate of change always basically is always between two points in time, meaning that, for example, the point x1 and the point x2, and the average rate of change between these two points in time, that would be essentially some value that you can calculate based on the based on the slope of the of the line that you can draw between the two points essentially, right? So you could call this, for example, average velocity. The slope of this line you could call it average velocity. Now, suppose that you want to calculate the, uh, 
you want to calculate the instantaneous velocity meaning that when you take a look at the um, um, the, the the speedometer of your car the, speedo the speedometer of the car at any point in time shows you essentially some velo some velocity that velocity is basically um, is not is is no average velocity is it is an instantaneous velocity meaning that it's telling you that at this point in time right now your velocity is for example 50 miles per hour or 80 kilometers per hour and so on and so forth right um so So basically, which means that essentially you can also calculate the instantaneous rate of change of position with respect to time, which would be instantaneous velocity. So if basically if the slope of this line uh, essentially between these two points happens to be average rate of change of position with respect to time, if I want to calculate the the instantaneous rate of change of position with respect to time at some point a for example that would be essentially the the slope of the line that goes through the graph of the function at this point and at this point only right which has essentially the um, the slope of the function itself at this point and this this line I call it basically tangent Meaning that I could say that this line is tangent to the graph of the function at the point x is equal to a, but then this point of this 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 line over here I call it the secant line, and the the secant line goes through the func goes through the graph of the function at two points, which is at at the at point essentially x is equal to a and the and point essentially x is equal to for example, x1 or x or some other point, essentially. So, which means that basically a tangent line, when you, when you draw essentially a tangent to the graph of the function, the tangent has essentially the same, the exact same slope as the graph of the function itself at that point, and it is the instantaneous rate of change of the function um, with respect to whatever value essentially you have along the horizontal axis right whereas essentially a secant line when you when you draw a secant line essentially between any two points on the graph of the function that's the average rate of change of the function between those two points in time and uh, it goes through the graph of the function at two points, not at one point. And that would be essentially an average rate of change, right? So this, this would be the tangent line would be the instantaneous, the instantaneous rate of change. Whereas the secant line or the slope of the secant line tells you about the the average rate of change so that's essentially the reason why why we say over here that that the slope of this line is the average rate of change of f with respect to essentially between the between the points a and x essentially right now if basically if i want to now if i want to find if i want to find basically now i could basically what i could do is that now suppose that i want to find the the the, the slope of this 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 tangent line which is the instantaneous rate of change at this point right so what i could do is that I could I could take essentially this point X and, and and make it closer essentially to the point A for example I could I could take the point X over here and 
you know, I would have a, I would have essentially a um, I would have essentially a point over here and then I could draw a line between these two points and now you can see that basically that the slope of the line essentially changed from this slope to this slope which is a lot closer to the slope of the tangent line at the point where I'm looking at the at the at the instantaneous rate of change of the function right and then I keep I can keep doing the same thing get closer and closer to a and as I as I do so basically then what happens is that the slope of this line gets closer and closer to the slope of the tangent line <coughs> Which means that basically to calculate the, the instantaneous rate of change at this point, at this point A, I could take the same slope that I have over here and write it as the limit of basically the same thing f of x minus f of A over x minus A and then keep approaching A, meaning that as x approaches A. That is the, this basically, this thing over here is the instantaneous rate of change, is the instantaneous rate of change of f with respect to x at x is equal to a which is uh, the um, which is also called the derivative of the function at a i mean by definition is also called the derivative the derivative of basically of f at x is equal to a which is denoted by which is denoted by f prime of a as a result, we could say that basically f prime of a is equal to basically is equal to the limit of basically f of x minus f of a over x minus a as x approaches a. Okay? So it's pretty simple. Hopefully you can understand it. Now, um, there is another way that, that we can write down the same thing meaning that instead of basically writing this this way i could write it this way <coughs> the exact same situation i have basically the function essentially this is the function f right so this is the function f and this is x and this is y and i have the exact same point over here I have the exact same point, let's call this point for example A and let's call this point for example A plus H meaning that this distance over here I'm taking this distance as H right <coughs> and of course then this point would be F of A plus H and this point over here would be F of A so then again, you can calculate the slope of the line that goes through these two points as the difference, the difference along the, along the vertical axis, which is f of a plus h minus f of a, and then divided by this difference, which is h, right? So this is the slope of, the slope of this line. And to then essentially then to calculate the slope of this line which is tangent to the graph of the function at this point what you could do is that you can take this the same slope take the limit as h approaches zero just the exact same thing that we did before so the limit of basically f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero is therefore the slope of this line again in this situation this slope represents basically the average rate of change of this function between these two points and this slope represents basically the um, the the instantaneous rate of change of the function exactly at this point <coughs> 
and so then you could you could think of this 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 slope as the average velocity you could think of this slope as the instantaneous velocity right so you can write your average velocity and instantaneous velocity either as the limit of f of x minus f of a over x minus a as x approaches a or you can write it as the limit of f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero depending on the situation you need to pick one of these because it would be easier to to either use this one or the other one depending on the situation right Uh, I think I have covered everything that needs to be needs to be said essentially in these cases. Okay, so now, so now that we have there is there is only one thing that remains here which is something that you need to understand so that you don't forget essentially there is there, there has to be essentially a link between these two definitions and that link is basically as follows so we saw that basically that the um, that the instantaneous rate of change of the function is um, the limit of we call it f prime of a for example we saw that that is the limit of basically f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero right now in this definition if you take basically if you take a plus h as x for example then based on that you could say that basically h would be the same thing as x minus a right then the same definition you can write it as f prime of a would be the limit of f of a plus h would be f of x minus f of a over h which is the same thing as um, uh, x minus a as basically as h approaches zero uh, as h approaches zero essentially x approaches a right x approaches a so you can write it this way as well so these two definitions are really the same thing there is no difference between them the only the the only thing is that basically in this case basically you have some point you have some point um, essentially um, there is only one point over here which is x is equal to a in this case there is some f of x and there is some f of a meaning that you have some point x and you have some point a over here that that's the only difference and depending on the situation you use either this one or the other one okay okay so now um, now that we have understood hopefully all of these concepts now let's go and solve this problem So we saw over here that for this function x minus 1 over x minus 2 the the line tangent to the graph of the function had a slope m is equal to negative 1 right which means that if essentially this is actually the value of the derivative of the function at this point right the instantaneous rate of change right And all of these situations, essentially, you can understand them if you're looking at, if you're looking for a practical way to understand these, all of these, these different situations that come in um, differentiation and also in integration. You can also, you can always imagine the, essentially, the, the, uh, the, the situation of the car moving along a straight road so let me tell you briefly about that situation so so that you can keep it in mind and then based on that you will you will be able to essentially uh, make essentially all of these different types of situations you can you will be able to make them more concrete okay so now basically all of calculus is about rate of change right meaning that 
whatever you're doing whether you're doing differentiation or or dif or or integration whether you're using the integral or whether you're using the integral or basically d by dx of and so on and so forth which is essentially the this 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 notation over here d by dx of this is um, um, the derivative which is for example f prime of a and and the, and the, and the integral essentially is looking at the same situation from a different point of view right or from a different angle that becomes integration otherwise you we are talking about differentiation right and both of these situations are about rates essentially rate of change you're, you're you're using essentially the same rate of change in different ways to essentially and you start from one point and 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 essentially there is there is only two points in calculus there is point a and there is point b if you want to move from point a to b you would use differentiation and if you want to to move back from b to a you would use integration that's essentially it's the whole everything all that essentially it's all that you all you that you ever do in calculus right meaning that the basis is the is essentially this simple thing um, and these two points are basically to make it more concrete is that is essentially the same situation that we had over here you have essentially a function along this axis you have position and along this axis you have time and uh, we have essentially some function like this and of course this function is telling you about the rate of change of position with respect to time right and when you when you essentially when you want to when you differentiate this function the the derivative of the function will tell you about the the instantaneous rate of change which is velocity which means that from position which means that from position you get to velocity right and um, moreover but but then there is situations where you have where you have essentially this situation over here meaning that you have essentially a function over here this is let's call this for example velocity and this is time and you have some some similar function like that for example like what you had over here um, if you integrate this function if you integrate this function from velocity from velocity you get to position or essentially the change in position right so these are essentially the two points either you want to get from position to velocity or from from velocity to position in this case you will differentiate your function in this case you will integrate your function in both of these processes uh, you are using the exact same thing which is the which, which is essentially the, the the rate of change you're, you're using the rate of change to get from position to velocity or vice versa to get from velocity to position that's essentially all that you always do in calculus or you can do the same thing for example the exact same situation um, you can essentially you can imagine that you have for example a function over here for example you have you have velocity for example versus time you have velocity versus time and then if if you when you have some function like this if you differentiate this function meaning that if you calculate the derivative of this function from velocity you get to acceleration and vice versa if you had if you had a function that if you had the if you had a function for example suppose that for example you had over here you had acceleration 
and over here you had time and this was your function for example then if you integrate this function from acceleration from acceleration you get back to velocity which means that basically integration is um, integration is essentially a process of making things smaller uh, basically it, it, it's breaking things down and then summing up all of those very small 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 essentially chunks you you will basically in integration you will break things down into very small chunks and then sum them up in order to for example in order to come up with velocity based on acceleration in differentiation basically what you're doing is that you're um, you're going essentially in the exact same process mathematically basically they are uh, they are basically opposites okay now so and both of these both of these processes always essentially have to do with the rate of change meaning that you you're using the, the rate of change in two different directions okay now in to understand this, essentially both of these situations you need to understand a very simple situation which is a, a car moving along a straight road suppose that this is a straight road and you have a car over here right you have this car over here and and this car is moving along this road right now suppose that for example this is this is at time t1 you're at f of t1 right and at time t2 which is for example this this point over here and the car is moving in this direction at time t2 you're at f of t2 and suppose that there is some function basically explaining or 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 modeling essentially the the relationship between f of t and t in this situation for example f of t is equal to t squared or something like that so that means that basically that this function at any point in time gives you the position of your car of the car along the road right if you want to if you want to think basically more concretely for in in the case of this situation in the case of this situation you have t over here which is time and over here you have f of t which is uh, position and you have some function like this that that somehow relates t to f of t right you can call this also y for example now the the um to essentially to calculate to calculate basically um, so you know that basically at time t1 you were at f of t1 at time t2 you were at f of t2 right so that means that basically your average velocity if somebody asked you what was your uh, average velocity between these two points in time you would just simply answer okay so in the beginning of the trip i was at f of t1 and at the end of the trip i ended up at f of t2 which means that the distance covered which means that the distance covered was the distance covered was basically f of t2 minus f of t1 right and it took me from t1 to t2 to cover this distance which means that the time elapsed that the time elapsed was t2 minus t1 right and so of course this is since distance covered over time elapsed that's average velocity that's average velocity so that that's essentially you would calculate your average velocity at uh, 
as f of t2 minus f of t1 over t2 minus t1, right? Now, your goal here is to calculate your instantaneous velocity at uh, t1, exactly at t1. You're not, you're not basically in, interested in your, uh, you're not interested in your average velocity. You're interested in, in the instantaneous velocity of the car exactly at t1, right? So then what I'm going to do now, when you calculate this, basically this would be, a situation like this meaning that you have basic d t over here you have f of t over here and um, at t1 you were at uh, and this is essentially your function for example right and this is this is t1 and at t1 you were at f of t1 at t2 Let's say that at t2 you were somewhere over here, and you were at f of t2, and then based on the shape of, based on the, the the structure of this of this quotient, you can you can tell that that this essentially is telling you about the slope of the line that you could draw between these two points. This is essentially the slope of this line. This whole thing over here is the slope of this line which is the average velocity of the car between t, t1 and t2, right? So now, since my goal is to calculate the instantaneous velocity exactly at this point in time, what I could do is that, is that I, can, I can say that instead of calculating the average velocity between these two points in time, I'm going to make the time interval a little bit shorter so that when the time interval gets a little bit shorter uh, between essentially if t1 if essentially if t2 minus t1 this this time interval is for example five minutes in five minutes the car can speed up can slow down speed up slow down many many times and there is no way to there is no way no, there is no way to tell essentially what the car was doing between these two points in time, right? So I could, of course, calculate an average of all of these velocities, but to tell that what was, for example, the, the, the velocity essentially exactly at this point in time, there is no way to tell. One way to, one way to get closer to basically to, to make these variations smaller and smaller what i could do is that i can make this this time interval shorter and shorter right which means that i could say that instead of taking this 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 point in time t2 i'm going to make this t2 a little bit closer to t1 so i'm going to move it basically over here i'm going to say that this is t2 and this is f of f of t2 and then calculate essentially the exact same thing one more time and since the time interval has now become much shorter, the car doesn't have much time to speed up and down, up and down, up and down. And then I could tell that, I could say that basically that the average velocity that I calculate between this point in time and this point in time is very, should be very close to the, to the instantaneous velocity of the car exactly at this point, right? Which means that then, what this means in, in terms of a graph is that I'm moving the t, essentially t2, somewhere over here. This would be essentially the, and, and that would mean that basically that, that I could calculate the slope of this line instead of the slope of this line, right? So I could move a little bit, and by the same logic, I could move a little bit closer, meaning take t2 over here. And in terms of a graph, again, that means that I'm, I've moved essentially somewhere over here, call it T2. And that means that basically now I can calculate the slope of, the slope of this line over here, right? And so you can see that as I move closer and closer to, to T1, basically these, the slope of these lines are, the slope of these lines are changing 
it's getting closer and closer to a line that would go through the graph of the function exactly at one point exactly at this point and so from this process i can conclude that the that the, the that the instant so essentially all of these slopes over here are average velocities right but then from the same process i can conclude that the instantaneous velocity at this point should be the slope of this green line over here right and you can see that this is the limiting process meaning that um meaning that basically that um that i'm getting i'm getting closer and closer t2 is getting closer and closer to t1 and uh, as basically as 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 t2 is as t2 is getting closer and closer to t1 f of t2 is also getting closer and closer to f of t1 which means that basically if the slope of this line is f of t2 minus f of t1 over t2 minus t1 then eventually the slope of this green line over here would be essentially the limit of the same thing which is f of t2 minus f of t1 over t2 minus t1 as t2 approaches t1 right and that's essentially how you would calculate the the instantaneous velocity of the car exactly at this point so the the the, the, the instantaneous velocity instantaneous velocity of the car at t is equal to t1 can therefore be written as can therefore be written as the limit of basic f of t2 it can be written as f of t2 minus f of t1 over basic t2 minus t1 as t2 approaches t1 right <coughs> now here you can see that you can see that basically f is a f is a position function this is a position position versus time right and so if you have essentially the position versus time function of the car the position function essentially being f then the instantaneous velocity of the car can be calculated exactly in this way right meaning that when you differentiate your function or when you find the derivative of your function you're using the position function and based on the position function you're coming up with the uh with the um with the <coughs> <coughs> you're using the position function and you're 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 ending up with the instantaneous velocity function right so that's essentially the whole story meaning that whenever you have a function basically some x over here and some y over here and and you have a function for example let's call this for example f uh, when you calculate the the basic the, when you calculate the derivative of this function which we call basically f prime of a for example which would be essentially the, the derivative of the function at point a which we know is basically is the is the slope of the line tangent to the graph of the function at this point when we calculate f prime of a that that that's essentially the limit of that's the limit of basically f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches as h approaches zero which means that over here you have position over here you have time and you differentiate your function in this manner you will end up with instantaneous velocity so position and instantaneous velocity right so if you basically if you understand the situation over here 
which is your um, if you understand the situation over here that which is the, the situation of a car moving along a straight road then basically at least now you have under, you have understood that the concept of instantaneous velocity and what is the derivative of the function and all of those uh, basically concepts uh, later on what we can do is that we can use the same situation of the car and based on that we can understand the 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 the, the idea of the integral which is which is essentially the same process but essentially uh, the other way around so we will talk about that later so i i'm i i i i've I've, I've run out of time on this in this video so in the next video we will talk about um, the um, question number five thank you